Well, good golly, Miss Molly, look at who made it back, or look who showed up for week number four of the ball striking series. Oh yeah, we are on our road to 10,000 subscribers. So I would really, really appreciate it if you subscribe to the channel and hit the bell notification button for me. And remember, if you like today's video, click the like button below. Let's go have some fun. So for those of you that have made it here to the final step today, we got an exciting one for you because I'm gonna teach you guys how to add some speed back to the mix here, but we're gonna do it in a responsible way. Because yes, I like to live my life on the edge. And the great Lil Bow Wow said one day in a movie that nobody on this planet saw, including myself, it's called Fast and the Furious Tokyo Drift. If you've seen it, I saw, I'm sorry if I'm being offensive to you. He said, you ain't in control unless you out of control. And I was like, that's what it is right there. That's something that I can pass along to my students of the game and help them understand what the release should really be all about. Release, the definition of release is to let go, right? Doesn't mean to hang on for dear life. I'm gonna teach you what I call the narrow wide acceleration drill. Now, big caveat to this is that you just did three weeks worth of hard work here. You just did three weeks of reps where you started out without even the golf club in your hands. And then you started out without even hitting any golf balls for the first week. I don't want you taking all that hard work and screwing up my party just to be able to add some more speed to the mix. You have to do this responsibly. If you start going out there and trying to add speed and you start seeing your lead wrist break down, or you start having a multi-directional miss on your hands, or you start having no control of the low point, or even your sequence gets off, then you need to stop doing what it is that you're doing and go back and watch the first three videos in the series. If you start adding speed to the mix here and you start hitting it further into the woods or wherever, you're hitting it all over the lot, I don't want you flying here to Orlando to punch me. So you have to remember, there is a balancing act when it comes to putting speed back in the mix here. Now speed is obviously very important, but you can add speed back and not disrupt all of the hard work you put in in the first place. You get what I'm saying? Okay, now, I know everybody loves when I'm redundant and say the same thing over and over again, so that's what you just got. Simple little setup for you today. You're gonna have, you don't have to have two alignment sticks down, I just use them every time I practice because I like to make my practices meaningful. I have positioned my golf ball where it's gonna be off of my logo on my chest when I get ready to rock and roll here. And I've got three golf balls that are out in front of it. These three golf balls, one of them is kind of in line with my lead foot here. The other one is just on the outside part of my lead foot and one is really far forward. This is where I call your acceleration zone. This is where I actually want you to start feeling like you're throwing the club and getting a lot of that whoosh sound to start to happen. Now I know a lot of you at home are probably ready to turn off the video because that seems illogical and seems a little bit on the crazy side. Why would we wanna have the max speed point out here in front of the golf ball? Why wouldn't we wanna have it down here where the ball is present? Remember one very important thing here. A bulk of your speed in the golf swing comes from your ability to be able to release this really important angle that you have between your wrists and your forearms in the golf club, okay? That angle right there is a big source of leverage. Most of the time, you all will take and start throwing the club very early in your downswing on this side of the body. Why? Well, because that feels like the right thing to do. That feels like you're gonna speed the club up over here and it's gonna go really fast by the time it gets down here. But what that leads to is exactly the reason why you're here watching this ball striking series in the first place. As you get the club starting to pass your hands, adding a whole bunch of loft to it, and now you've destabilized the hitting area, the most important area of the golf swing. This is the area where it matters the most. We gotta do things right down here. So what, in order to be able to do that stuff, what you have to do is you have to be able to preserve this angle, this sort of narrow sort of sensation that you see and you feel, right? You can see how the club shaft is very close to my, my trail arm here. This would be really wide. This is why we work off of a sort of a wide, narrow, wide swing shape. So when we do this drill, you're gonna keep everything that we've worked on up to this point right on the forefront of your brain. You're gonna keep it all there. You need to focus on the lead wrist, the lead hip. I want you to watch out for two ball striking killers when this starts to happen, when you start adding speed to the mix. These are two very, very common mistakes that a lot of you at home make when it comes to hitting the golf ball. The first mistake that a lot of you will do is when you start to release the club, if you do it too early, okay, this would be considered a steepening move, then what you're gonna do is to shallow it back out is you're gonna stand up and out of posture. I want you to stay in posture as long as you possibly can. In fact, when your hands exit the point of contact and they get outside of the acceleration zone, at that point, the golf ball is already long gone. You can start to move up and out of posture all you want. You will see really good ball strikers and most of the playing professionals that you see on TV, they're maintaining their posture for a long time. Their head and their chest stay back here their hands are up at right around chest height, and then they start to roll up into a finish. That's a position 
that we call side bend, and it is a position that's very uncomfortable. You don't have to look like that in order to be able to get your speed in the right spot, just so you understand that. So remember, your job is to make sure that you feel like you're staying in posture until your hands get outside the acceleration zone. Okay, so a good way to think about that is where, do I, where are my hands right now? Well, they're at the completed part of the release. So as soon as my hands get past that, I can start to move up into finish. Stay in there as long as you can. Got it? Fault number two, ball striking killer. And I don't know why so many people do this, but it happens, it's very common. I see it from a lot of my students that come in, is as the hands and arms start working down in front of their body, you start creating a lot of tilt before you make contact with the ball. You start getting a lot of tilt to your spine. So if you look at my spine here, it is way outside my lead knee. I want you to feel like your spine is as upright as you possibly can get it. Now, under no circumstance is it going to be vertical like this. You're gonna have some tilt. I want you to feel like your spine stays as upright as you can until again, your hands get past the end of the acceleration zone. So that's it. So now you have two additional things to think about. A lot of you at home are like, how am I gonna think about these 33 different things that you just put in here over the last three weeks? Well. You gotta pick and choose your battles. You gotta be pretty proficient with the stuff that we've done with our lead wrist. You've gotta be pretty proficient with the timing of the hip. Now what we wanna do is just make sure that we're feeling ourselves stay in posture and making sure that we feel upright when we start trying to speed the club up here. Now, how I want you to do this, this narrow wide acceleration drill, is I want you to actually preset yourself in a position where you've got about 80% of your weight underneath your lead foot. You're gonna have your hands at about trail pocket height or trail hip height and you're gonna have a lot of angle here. And I mean a lot, okay? I don't wanna see it down in here. Just get it up in this neck of the woods. You're gonna have a lot of angle here. You got it? From this position, what you're gonna do is you're gonna post up and you're gonna throw the club as hard as you can into the acceleration zone. And you're gonna keep your chest and your head down behind the golf ball as long as you can. And you're gonna to try to feel your spine staying upright as you're doing it. So you're gonna go from narrow to wide and you wanna to try to hear that whoosh whoosh, down here. A lot of you will actually hear it way over here in your golf swings, okay? And you're gonna do this 10, 15, 20 reps or so. Let's just start out by doing 10 reps. Again, all I want you to be able to do, 80% of your weight underneath your lead foot, really narrow. I want you to post up and throw the club and try to get it to accelerate in here. And I want you to think about the body positions as I just outlined them. Piece of cake. So we're gonna do 10 to 15 reps. Okay, ball position off of the left chest. Okay, 80% of my weight under my left ankle. Okay, I got a lot of angle here. My hands are outside my trail hip. Trail thigh, I should say. Post and release. You're trying to really hear that whoosh sound. You can throw the club head down to the ball, right? Feel yourself kind of snap it down there. Okay. Okay, now that we've done 10 to 15 reps, now, guess what we're gonna do? We're gonna start adding some movement to this. We're gonna start moving through positions, but we're gonna start out by working from nine o'clock to three o'clock. So right around chest height to chest height. Don't worry about the length of the swing. If it gets a little bit longer than that or a little bit shorter than that, you're totally fine. I don't want your brain power allotted to where you are on the clock. But again, we're just trying to keep some out of it for now just to get this stuff all timed up. There's some timing that takes place in the golf swing as much as I wanna extract all of it. Okay, so now what we're gonna do, same practice program. So we're gonna do about 10 to 15 reps from a nine to three sort of format. And I want you to feel that narrowness turn into something really wide down here. Okay. Now you've done 10 to 15 reps like that. Guess what I want you to do? I want you to start hitting some balls. It's time to have some fun with it. But what I do before I start going further and further up the ladder and making the swing longer, is I give myself a goal. I call these ladder drills. So from chest height to chest height, I wanna be able to hit five golf balls really solid. I want them to be really compressed. I wanna look out there and have the shot shape that I worked on trying to get from week number three. I wanna be able to see that stuff come to light. I wanna see five shots in a row. If I don't get five shots in a row, then I need to go back and work on the things that I did from the first three videos, or I need to take the speed out of it and really get myself to focus on controlling the low point and controlling what the swing is doing. Let's just say you get four balls in, and on the fifth one, it's a disaster. Start the process over. This is you and I being disciplined. 
If you get five in a row, then tell yourself now you can go to shoulder height to shoulder height, and then you can go into full swing. You can go up and down the ladder as you please. These, again, are drills that I want you to have in your brain that make you accountable for what it is that you're trying to get done in the first place. So I'm gonna work off of a one-to-one -one ratio because I know you guys like that for saving you some time and having to watch me hit balls, okay? So we're gonna do a one-to-one. -one. Okay, move in. Okay, I'm trying to keep my head and my chest over it. I'm trying to keep my spine from tilting back. Man, that was really, really good. So we're gonna do another one here. We're gonna do a one-to-one. -one. Again, you're trying to hear the whoosh sound up here. Okay, maintaining your posture, trying to keep your spine upright. Don't let the stuff that you've worked so hard on over the last few weeks break down. Whoo! That's it. Thank you all so much for going on this ride with me. Thank you so much for all of the positive comments. I love teaching the game of golf and I love being able to help you guys out. So hopefully you guys enjoyed the series. If you guys have any questions or comments, please post those up below and I'll help you out as best as I possibly can. Get out there, start playing some good golf. Do it in a safe, efficient way and be disciplined in the process. You're gonna see some good results. Make it a great day.